Welcome, Francisca de Han. Welcome, welcome in Vienna. You are the head of Gender Studies Department of CU, Central European University, and you moved from Budapest to Vienna now. Uh, how do you feel? <laughs> well, it's, um, I think we still have mixed feelings because it's not nice to be kicked out of a country. Expelled, yes, more or less. and the university, the teaching activities of the university eh, were expelled, so we had to move to another place, not too far. Then I think Vienna was a great choice because it is a fantastic city to live in and, eh, and it's relatively close to Budapest so people can, if necessary, travel back and forth. Can you tell me why, uh, is there any argument, why is there a gender department? Um, in the, I think in the 1980s maybe, yeah, there were arguments strong, strongly in Germany in particular about whether one should have a separate gender studies or women's studies department or whether one should be integrated yeah. into other departments. Yeah. The, the CEU started in 1991 and the, the goal of the CEU was to offer, uh, to enhance democracy through, by providing good education. So democracy is a, a key word, it was a key word from the beginning and it was clear almost immediately that in order to do that you also need to include gender studies. You can't have a democracy or thinking about democracy if you don't include women's rights, um, the, the role of gender in society. And then from 2002 We've been a department, a full-fledged department at the CEU. And I think it's good because um, when you have a department, you have a group of people who are experts in the discipline. And the discipline of gender studies is incredibly broad because gender is part of every aspect of society and of all disciplines. So we are an interdisciplinary department, you could say. We create our knowledge, we do, huh? we do research, we teach, and then from there we cooperate with others. And so we are not isolated, yes. but we are the, the core from which this, the gender studies knowledge is created. Can you tell us two or three examples how you influence or motivate your colleagues of other departments in the university to take up gender aspects? In the tw almost 20 years that I have been at the CEU, you can see that there's an enormous, um, not only has the department grown very much in terms of number of students, programs, our output, our visibility, but also in terms of our visibility within the university. So huh, I think within society at large, there is more awareness now of the importance of gender and that we need eh, to go to a gender balanced society. And that process has also happened within the CEU. So for example, eh, there, in, there is now a rule since a few years that if you organize something, you cannot just do a, a male only panel. So eh, there is all sorts of ways in which at different levels of the university, it has become clear what gender means, what gender studies does, and why it matters. And of course it is an ongoing process, always. And, and what has also struck me is that um, the, the policies of Viktor Orban against the CEU, but also against gender studies, have actually very much um, made us more visible. Yes. And has made us colleagues both within the CEU and at other universities, for example ELTI, realize more what gender studies is and why it matters. And people have told me that. So I think that's an interesting un unexpected ef effect of his policy. Yeah, I mean, this uh, is what you said at the beginning. This is again uh, your fight for democracy. Yeah. You are working on networks of women's mo movements. What do you learn from this? I have been uh, doing a, a research about the women's movement, the international women's movement, networks in the women's movement for many years. And um, I have from the beginning been convinced that these women's organizations and their, their formal and informal networks were crucial and have been 
really um, very influential if you look at the 20th century uh, in uh, enhancing women's rights both nationally and internationally through the UN. Much more than people are aware, aware of. of and still. especially women are aware yes, of. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And, uh, and many, and if you do research about these women, so I look at the organizations, but also at individuals, and then every time that I go back to my research or that I write, I'm impressed by them, because these women, also in the 19th century, I did research about the 19th century as well, and they dedicated years, decades, sometimes really their whole lives to improving the lives of other women, yes. eh, from prostitutes and prisoners to Workers, working class women yeah. and women in all... Um, um, Founding um, unions. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. And all domains and all um, um, forms of jobs, etc. And uh, many of these women, they were friends, eh, they, they helped each other, they worked, the, I mean, the feminists of, of different denominations and different backgrounds, they worked in these organizations Nation, locally, nationally, internationally, they, yeah, they cooperated and without these networks and these friendships it, it would not have worked as it did. You are also here today because we are uh, uh, presenting together uh, the uh, kind of quintessence of this Creative Europe project, female music practice. Um, is there anything you like best at the book? Mm, I, no, I would say I like the topic as such, because I, I do think that music is very important for human beings and um, it's important for me, but it also has been very important of the history of women's movements. And so if I look at the various women's organizations that I have studied, or individual women, they, were, they, they used music as part of their struggles. Yeah, sometimes they had their own song for the organization or they had um, um, specific songs for certain days or occasions. Yes. Um, and and they the birthday <laughs> is by two yeah. women, <laughs> kindergarten teachers. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, a success. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and they used different forms of art yeah, to, en to enhance their cause. It could be yeah, music, songs, songs were very important, but also theater, um, theater for children, of course, paintings, all sorts of arts. But yeah, music was important because, again, it, it unites people yeah, and it, it also creates a feeling of, of, of solidarity and unity. So music has been really important in the history of women's movements.